Ragazzi, can you hear me? But this was so sad without so sound. silent. <laughs> no, no, no music, no. no nothing, you know. No, no, I don't like it. I don't uh, yeah, like... it was a it was a very uh, a very very sad uh, jingle. No, but anyway, anyway, the... no, 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 I don't accept it. <laughs> no, no, no. But let's say uh, uh, Francesco is doing uh, his best, but he is not. Uh, he is trying to uh, arrange uh, because Sebi is not with us today. And, uh, and Wait a moment. may I do something? Yes, please. It's the same. No, no sound. <laughs> no sound. Yeah. No sound, Emilio. Emilio, no sound. No sound. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Unacceptable. No, no sound. No. So we have to sing. Forget it. Forget it. How I are forget. you, my friends? How are you? How are you? How are you? So we are fine. And you? <laughs> yes, very good. Very good. We um, we still miss uh, Constantino. Hopefully, he will be with us next uh, Sunday. Will. And. Yeah. Uh, a again, a lot of people from uh, all over the world. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, is the chat active? Because it yes, is yes, the chat. yes, active. The chat, but also the uh, answering questions. Uh, hey, is active France, in UK, yeah, but uh, Montenegro, Brazil, Brazil, Georgia. Georgia. Yes, Brazil, Latvia, Germany, Turkey, uh, but I don't see anybody writing in the chat, and I wonder if the chat is not uh, activated. Uh, I think we... so. I think so. Anyway, anyway, uh, they are they are anyhow able to um, uh, to uh, to interact with the question and answer. Okay, so Francesco. Can you uh, poi mandare la question of the week? Can you uh, can you uh, uh, ask our people uh, the question of the week, which is uh, related, of course, uh, to the topic uh, we are going to speak today? Yes, the chat is active. You see? Now it's active. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. So, uh, the, the the question of the week is related to the topic uh, of today. Um, not sure if Francesco uh, is. Uh, uh, <laughs> Francesco, I give you five seconds. Four, three, two, one, ignition. So <laughs> we go without the question of the week. <laughs> No, but you can ask us. You can ask yes. me. So I ask you, I ask you and all the, the, the beautiful people here connected here. Do you use digital dermoscopy? Yes or no? And also, if you use only digital dermoscopy or also uh, digital dermoscopy plus total body photography? Eh? This was the question of the week. So it's not a problem that it was not launched. Come no, on. it's not a big problem, of course. It's not a problem. No, oh, it's not a problem. It's, it's not a problem. The answer, I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody using it. Yeah, for example, let's see. Oh, somebody said no in the chat. I have to uh, say. No, you see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> come on. <laughs> not everybody is using digital dermoscopy. Um, and today we will speak about indications for digital dermoscopy uh, in brazil there was a comment uh, see, see this dermoscopy and total body joanna yes from Riyadh, saudi arabia the land of cristiano ronaldo hello I, uh, I don't know uh, that in this yeah place. yeah 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 nice nice hello hello it hello is, from is, gaza. Is, wait a moment hello from gaza the land of, of hero Wow, really? You're, you're... Ah, here we are. Here we are. Here we are with the question. Oh. Of... Do you use <laughs> digital dermoscopy? No, yes, only video. Yes, video plus total body photography. Go, 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 go. Go, my friends. Go, my friends. 
For example, I will use, ah, uh, no, I cannot vote. <laughs> so I predict 80% for the winning answer. Yes, yes, yes. There are a lot of, uh, of uh, ants on. I know, I, I know, I don't know why. Yeah, anyway, uh, okay, Francesco, maybe you can stop it. Lo stopiamo. Stopiamo, I like stopiamo. Stopiamo. <laughs> stopiamo, okay, no 38%, you see? And then 27, yes, only video. And 36, 65 out of 183 said video and total body photography. Okay. Nice. It's a good proportion, by the way. Well, split answer. One third, yes. one third, one third. Split, split, split. So let me introduce you the uh, the paper of the week, which was uh, published a few months, I would say also a few years ago, by the way, uh, already, uh, into uh, which journal? Which journal? Which journal? This is a strange journal. Dermatology Practical and Conceptual. Plus yeah. Conceptual. What, what's that? Well, yeah, anyway. No, no. It's, it's our beloved journal in which uh, Teresa and uh, Russo from my group uh, and uh, a lot of beautiful people contributed uh, to uh, set up the indications for digital monitoring of patients with multiple nevi. And these were coming out as recommendations from the International Dermoscopy Society. So what we know, uh, what we know is that uh, eventually, uh, this is not the right patient for digital dermoscopy, right, Emilio? Right, Nisa? Yeah. Uh, it's not really the, the right one, yeah? Probably this is the right one. Okay, so we don't need a paper to <laughs> understand this, right? <laughs> the but, problem is that digital dermoscopy on, on the left would take a couple of minutes, while on the right, digital yes. dermoscopy. <laughs> yes, it will take a little bit longer, yes. <laughs> but let me ask you, is this lady, uh, let's say, a good indication, a good candidate for digital dermoscopy? Hey. You know, this is the, 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 the reason why, in my view, there was a need for establishing a few details eh, to establish the right patient. Because, I mean, this is a time-consuming technique, eh? making photographs, eh? especially if we use not only digital dermoscopy. So we take the uh, one, two, three, ten images of ten lesions of this patient. Uh, but if we use also total body photography, it takes time, you know, at least half an hour. Eh? So we need to have good indications. And what we decided to do, a Delphi um, survey. Eh? So we asked questions to a group of experts, eh? and then we came to an agreement. Eh? And these are the five indications eh? to, uh, to which the experts um, uh, got in agreement, okay? So first one is patients with more than 60 melanocytic neva. It means a lot of neva. Eh? Of course, we don't count them one to one, right? <laughs> but see, more than 60, it means a lot of neva, okay? There is one indication, the second one, which is not connected to the number of neva. Eh? And this is the an eventual patient harboring a CDK N2A mutation. So it means a patient who had a, probably already a melanoma, a, a family melanoma, uh, and then uh, a, a genetic test was performed. If it's positive, independently from the number of nevi, the experts decided that they are good candidates for uh, total body photography and digital demoscopy. Then number three, Patients with more than 40 melanocytic neva and a personal history of melanoma. So if there is a personal history of melanoma, uh, also a, 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 a lower number of neva, a lower total count, to, ne, total nevus count is enough to offer this uh, uh, technique. Then number four, patients with more than 40 melanocytic neva and red hair eh, or 
MC1R mutations. Uh, so if they did the genetic test and they revealed an MC1R mutation, which is strongly connected to, to the presence of red air. And then number five, patients with more than 40 melanocyte in IVA and a history of organ transplantation. So it's very easy, huh? easy to remember. So this is number one. Huh? Patients with more than 60 melanocytic nevi. Of course, we didn't count all the nevi, but definitely, I suppose you agree with me, right? There are more than 60. It's huh? Easy to say. Easy to say. Okay. So what about this lady? You see that there are just a few pigment lesions. And, let me, and, 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 I, and I believe me, these are all seborrheic keratosis. Okay. But she uh, uh, got a previous melanoma and there was a... Uh, a melanoma, uh, other two melanomas in her family in first degree relatives. We use the rule of three. Huh? Do you use the same rule of three or rule of two? Well, I mean, of course, it depends how often you go, you want to get the test negative because mm. if you do it uh, yeah, with the rule exactly. of two, then uh, usually it's going to be negative. If you exactly. Do it with the rule what of does three. it mean? Mm. Exactly. Yeah. So what does it mean, the rule of two or rule of three? It means that we need, at least in, uh, in, in our center, we need three melanomas within the family or within the patient. So if this patient got three melanomas, then we offer uh, the test. If this lady uh, had a father or, a, or herself, a father or a, and the son or father and mother, for example. So first degree relatives, which are fathers and children. Eh? Brothers are second <laughs> second degree relatives. You know, uh, I, I underline this because in, you know, it's always quite difficult for me that, that uh, my mm -hmm. brother is second uh, degree relative. You know, we think it could be first. No, it's second. So if there are three melanomas in the family, first degree, then we offer the test and she, uh, uh, she got positive to the test. So she's a good candidate for total body photography. And then rule maybe, number three. Maybe let's, let's just uh, say a few more things if you go back. Yes. Uh, the reason why we say that we don't do the genetic testing to everybody, but we do it only uh, to those with two or three, three uh, cases of melanoma is simply because these tests are you know quite expensive? It's not a test like a blood test that you do with very few euros. Otherwise, or in the future, in case that genetic testing becomes more uh, easy to do, less costly, and so on, yeah. probably it could be applied to, to more people. So exactly. that's why we say uh, that we restrict the application to yes. to those that have really high yeah. chance to get the test yes. positive. Yes. I don't know exactly the percentages, but if you if you do rule three, it means that you will find like something like 10%, 20% positive. If you if you use the uh, rule of two, you you will find, I don't know, 2% uh, positive. Maybe less, maybe less. Yeah, even less. Yeah. So, uh, so indication number three, patients with more than 40 melanocytes in EVI and the personal history of melanoma. So you see this gentleman, he got a melanoma on the on, on his shoulder, and uh, most of these lesions are lentigos, eh? solar lentigos. So there is a sun damaged skin, but the neva are, let's say, not uh, as a high. Uh, there is a, such a total nevus count uh, comparable to the uh, gentleman I showed you before, but still he has uh, a reasonable amount of neva, and we offer them. Uh, total body photography. Then, number four, patients with more than 40 melanocytic nevi and red air. You see this lady, uh, she uh, is definitely uh, red. Uh, she has red uh, uh, type of skin, uh, type of uh, red, uh, hair color, and she has a reasonable amount of nevi, not uh, more than 60, but definitely uh, uh, more than 40, okay? And then uh, rule number five, this is a patient uh, with uh, uh, several seborrheic keratosis, some nevi, um, and uh, also uh, uh, some sun damaged skin, uh, but also uh, uh, an history of organ transplantation. Uh, he got uh, renal transplant 
And therefore, we decided to offer to this patient uh, uh, digital demoscopy and total body photography. So we go back to this lady. Huh? So uh, we see this lady and we ask questions. Huh? Did you get personal uh, uh, previous melanoma? Uh, did, you get, uh, uh, did you get organ transplant? Um, but all these were negative. All these risk factors were negative. So should we offer to this lady uh, digital demoscopy, yes or no? Digital okay. demoscopy or T uh, TBP? Both. both, both, because we usually do both. Yeah, or maybe there is the option to offer one of the two. Yeah, okay, don't be complicated, Emilio. Let's let's keep it simple. <laughs> no, no, seriously, I believe so. I believe well, that. Okay, <laughs> okay, but still, still, she if she gets into the program, it means that uh, uh, she, uh, I'm continuing. Yeah, you need to uh, to do what is your usual technique. You know, you cannot say okay, you do total body, but not digital demoscopy because you are not. Uh, uh, you don't, uh, we don't allow you, you know what I mean? So <laughs> in some way, what I'm trying to say is that this lady has a, 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 a relative uh, a small number of NIVA. They are all quite uh, regular. There are no risk factors. The possibility that this lady is getting a melanoma is very low, is very low. So of course we will continue uh, doing a follow-up every 12 months or every 24, uh, 24 months, but usually we don't offer uh, this kind of technique, uh, 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 time-consuming technique to a, a patient with uh, not such a, a high number of nevi with no risk factors. I just want to finish with this uh, patient, huh? uh, let's say a record man, because by far is this, this patient has the highest number of uh, melanomas, uh, synchronous melanomas that I saw in my life. Eh? The patient was referred for total body photography and digital demoscopy because the uh, referring doctor could not believe that these are all melanomas. <laughs> Can you imagine? How many you count here? Okay, melanomas. one, two, three. There are three, clear cut. Okay, yeah. and then here, yes, two more. Yes. And here, three more. Five more. Five more. And here, arms. <laughs> and here. <laughs> so there were something like 12, 12 contemporary primary melanomas. Some of them also quite, uh, uh, quite dangerous because uh, they were quite thick and very highly regressive. So, uh, of course, we offered him to continue with digital demoscopy. But, but what did you do? Did you excise them all? All of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took, I don't know, one month to excise everything. <laughs> but, but did and you did remember? he have a mutation? Well, CDK. We still don't know because this is quite a recent patient. Yeah, mm -hmm. recent one. But did you remember once uh, I showed it in one episode last year or the other first season? Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. Literally 50, 50, not, not. I remember that case. 50 yeah. melanomas. We still follow up this patient, by the way. We have excited something like five or six, yeah. the invasive ones. Mm. We applied imiquimod in some others because they were mainly lentiginous. Okay. Yeah. We did genetical testing. All the, the genes are negative. And all negative, yeah. All the genes are negative, yeah, yeah. And he's doing, let me tell you, Fine. It's now uh, like three or four years that we closely monitor. Uh, yeah, and we start asking ourselves if we need to do anything at all because he still develops invasive melanomas. <laughs> we are prone to excise them. <laughs> okay, uh, these are unique, uh, unique cases. Of course, extraordinary, extremely interesting would be to know the answer. But yeah, incredible. Ah, there is a good question from Rami with regard uh, with regards to the three, rule of three. What is a recommendation for a patient with two melanomas and one severely dysplastic or moderately dysplastic nevus? Let's say no. If you follow the rule of three, then this is uh, this situation is not enough. Um, it's uh, it's it's enough if the, he has two invasive melanomas and one melanoma in situ, but not less than this. 
Uh, well, there are a lot of questions and some are in the Q&A, some are in the chat, so uh, we'll try not to get lost. Uh, um, so uh, Francesca asks, these categories at risk, for how long do we need to monitor with the uh, body photography? Uh, so. uh, the answer is very easy, for, uh, forever. <laughs> and if you have a, a daughter uh, doing dermatology, why not? Uh, she will continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gary asks about a mutation that I'm not aware of, check 2 mutation. Mm. He had a question with check 2 mutation. Uh, if you were early melanomas, do we, do we have any experience with this? Myself, no. No, me neither. No. no. Uh, Giuseppe asks, uh, in my case, there were 50, 50, not 15, 50 melanomas. Mm. Um, then there is another question, uh, which was also, uh, it was asked twice, because it was also in the chat, about... Uh, which drugs we consider as immunosuppressive. So we said that the category number five uh, is, are those patients with 40 nevi, I mean, with some nevi, uh, and organ transplant, which means organ transplant, therefore immunosuppressed uh, because of the transplantation. Could we say which uh, drugs uh, we consider as potentially increasing the risk for melanoma? Cyclosporine, tacrolimus. Mycophenolate, uh, mycophenolate, yeah. Exactly. What about the Azotioprine, Azotioprine as well? Yeah. Yeah. And not, uh, not, not uh, the, the biologic therapy that we use for other indications like uh, psoriasis or atopic dermatitis. I mean, we don't care at all about all this. Yeah. Also, another category of drugs that appears to be. Uh, somehow related to a higher risk of melanoma, that's a recent knowledge, are the drugs used for or, for hormone uh, replacement therapy. So estrogens and progesterone used by women uh, uh, after menopause. Uh, so this hormone replacement therapy appears to increase somehow the risk for, of melanoma. And of course, those biologics that you said, uh, we know that, I mean, the ones we use for psoriasis and so on, we know that there is no association with an increased risk for melanoma, but for non-melanoma skin cancer, um, I think that data are a little bit conflicting. Mm -hmm. They might, there might be some connection with non-melanoma skin cancer. Yes, but um, data are not uh, really crystal clear. Yeah. It's a good question here with, by, from Sarah. 11 Niva on one arm, can indicate 100 NIVA in total. Is there a simple rule to approximate to 60 or 40 NIVA? Uh, no, fortunately not. Uh, uh, let's say, let's say, of course, we are very keen about uh, the total, uh, the 20 NIVA on the arms, 10 plus 10, uh, which means that uh, uh, if you see uh, 10 and 10 NIVA in the arms, it's very probable that this patient has a high total news count. It's not 100, let's say so. It's a high total news count. Um, but I mean, it's not uh, a mathematical stuff. You know, you, you always have to check uh, and there is no rule. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, feeling, you know. Uh, you have any rule to decide if a patient has a, a related question, which is good to clarify somehow, because we always say numbers and we never comment on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Mehran asks, okay, why did you say 40 or 60 Nivai? So why not 50 or 70? Why not 30 or 80? Yes. Do you want to, to give uh, a... Of course, uh, this is anyhow arbitrary because you have to establish a number, yeah? Uh, you cannot say high number, which is the number. Then the next next, next question is which number. Uh, but these numbers were chosen from uh, a few papers, especially yeah. one from Sara Gandini, who uh, were, was counting the odds ratio, so the uh, the risk, the the probability eh, of melanoma connected to people having. 20 Niva, 30 Niva, 40 Niva, 50 Niva, 60 Niva, 100 Niva. Eh? And she found out that uh, 60 Niva per se is, incre is increasing of three, four times the probability to get melanoma, while 40 Niva increases only one or two times. Yeah? And therefore, yeah. we decided that we need another risk factor, which is in combination 
brings the total probability of about two times, uh, three, four times, okay? Of course, always the calculation of the total number is remains arbitrary, even in the published studies. Uh, this was based on an arbitrary assessment, not on an actual count in the sense that you have your patient yeah. take it in front of you and you start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Therefore, we have to be a little bit, I mean, critical and careful when we hear, hear about absolute numbers. And obviously, it's not always feasible. It, it doesn't also make sense to get everybody undressed and spend yeah. 10 minutes in order to count the NEVI yeah. in order to decide if you're going to offer exactly. or not. Mainly, this gives an idea uh, of the importance of the very big number, the medium number, and the low number, because it is important. That's the idea. And probably in the revised version of the guidelines, we will try to use something like this in order to avoid this problem with uh, with the numbers. Um, multiply the number, red suggests multiply the number of nevi more than three millimeters on one arm and multiply 10 times uh, in order to find the total nevus count. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds somehow reasonable, but again, arbitrary, obviously. Uh, methotrexate, if it's included in the drugs that, uh, yes. Uh, methotrexate, well, uh, azathioprine is included in the drugs. Azathioprine, yes. Methotrexate, uh, no. For non-melanoma skin cancer, yes. Yes, but not for melanoma. Not for melanoma. Um, if patients with previous melanoma can uh, take hormone replacement therapy? Well, yes, if needed, they can, but they should just keep in mind that the, this increases somehow the risk, so they have a reason, a mo one more reason to be under uh, monitoring. Uh, I once heard a case in the UK melanoma focus presented of multiple cutaneous metastasis presenting as primary melanomas. Uh, uh, Stephen says, uh, I can only guess uh, the possibility of the so-called epidermotropic metastasis, because usually metastases are obviously only in the dermis, but sometimes cutaneous metastasis might migrate in, into the epidermis. These are the so-called epidermotropic, and in this case, they might um, uh, look like histopathologically uh, primary melanomas, each one of them. But if you ask me, I certainly consider that they are not primary melanomas. They are definitely uh, metastases that have this, this epiter, epidermotropism. Yeah. Is what described. Is a, an important question. Is it necessary in, 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 in patients with multiple nevi to make an eye check eh? an with an ophthalmologist? And the clear answer is no, no. because uh, skin melanoma, cutaneous melanoma, and ocular melanoma are two different beasts, and they are not connected to each other. So there is no risk factor for a, a patient having ocular melanoma to get, to get a cutaneous melanoma and vice versa. No risk fact, no increased risk for a patient with a cutaneous melanoma to get uh, ocular melanoma. So and I think that there were also a couple of studies published, not big, but a couple of studies that tried to to investigate if there is correlation uh, between ocular melanoma and the total nevus count, and there was not. Uh, exactly. While with melanoma, obviously. Bapoma is re related with UL melanoma. Bapoma. Bapoma. Ah. Ah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Hmm. Um, what is the delay to repeat total body dermoscopy six months? Uh, so probably, do you want to comment something, Jeffy, on the, the, the frequency of, of control? Yeah. First, Pascal is saying which size we have to count uh, the nevi, nevi in the total nevus count. And uh, we say usually two, three millimeter, not less than that. Uh, and then concerning the, the schedule, uh, it's very easy. We do short-term monitoring uh, after the baseline consultation. So after three months, we always ask the patient to come back in three, three months. Uh, this is especially needed to increase compliance of the patient. And then afterwards, we choose between six and 12 months. It depends if the patient has uh, less 
uh, ugly malls, uh, a, a, a less uh, the, uh, situation which is not a real disaster, we say 12 months. If it's, it's a very high risk patient, we say six months. Yeah. Would you offer total body photography for a patient with more than 14 EVI and on long-term immunosuppressant like uh, Mofetil, uh, Mycophenolat, or Azathioprine? Yes, uh, but not ah, not transplant. Who is not transplant, but under immunosuppressants? Come on, I would say yes, why not? But in general, again, we have to make a comment. Why do we get in the procedure of establishing these indications? Of course not, because it would be harmful for another patient, which is out of these risk factors to get the total body photography. Of course, it would be nice for everybody. The problem is that since this is a time consuming procedure, especially in the way that it was done until now, if you don't set criteria to select patients, then you will end up with extremely long waiting lists, which means that the patients that really need it will not have a fast access. This is the only reason why. Uh, of course, there is nothing wrong, nothing bad, nothing at all bad if you perform a total body photography on a patient who has nothing, none of these risk factors. And maybe there was a comment by earlier by Rhett uh, he said, everything is changing more effective due to the fast moving changes in AI and camera systems improvement. This is true. This is absolutely true. And uh, as long as this continues to improve, it could be that after a, a few years, uh, the procedure will be much faster and we will be able to expand the indications and to offer this procedure to more and more categories because I mean, why not? If we can, why not? No, uh, no problem. Um, Emilio, why don't you show us your cases and then yes, uh... yeah, because I was trying to to check what's going on with the questions because we had a huge number and yeah. uh, I, I, maybe we lost some, but anyhow, we try to reply to most of them. Yeah, let me share with you a couple of things, uh, and then we come back uh, with the discussion. Uh, by the way, there was one question about patients with previous history uh, of melanoma and my uh, my cases are really, will respond somehow to this question, at least from my point of view. Uh, so uh, here we have two patients, according to what we said until now, the patient on the right uh, does fulfill the criteria for uh, total body photography, the patient on the left uh, does not, unless there is something that we don't know from 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 the image that we see, uh, from the image that we see here. So we start from the patient on the right. The first thing that I would like to show you is this nibus with uh, peripheral globules. Do you do you worry about it? No, no. Uh, the edge is fifty. If you like to ask, okay, good. So, but let's see. Uh, the overview of this patient. And now let's see all the nevi together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything extremely annoying for you? No. Yeah. No. Huh? <laughs> this time, yes. <laughs> Which one? Which one? Number se seven. Uh, number ah, seven. Okay. What's this one? Okay. So, uh, so, yeah. it, so it's because, because it's I, no I, other. Because okay. it's different. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I mean, followed up, nothing important happened with this patient, but of course there are a number of moles that are uh, ugly if you assess them one by one, but nothing extraordinary, I would say, uh, in the overall, uh, when you compare them. Okay, now let's go back to our uh, uh, previous image. Now I tell you that the patient on the left had the personal history of melanoma 0.5 millimeters. So now comes the question, if this is enough to warrant uh, a total body photography or not. The point is that this particular patient, I don't know the total nevus count, but it appears to be not high. Huh? It appears to be maybe lower than 40. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Or maybe around that. Maybe, maybe around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So the point is that this patient in this image, in this image that you that you uh, saw earlier, there is already a melanoma, which of course uh, our naked eye is completely unable uh, to detect. And the only way that this melanoma was discovered was because this technique was applied. I yeah. mean, this melanoma could never be diagnosed at this stage if total body photography was not applied. You see here that the lesion uh, is uh, appears in the second image. The lesion is not here, huh? obviously. And you see dermatoscopically that this is, of course, we excised it, and I don't know how fast it, it, it was going to grow, but I can only guess but that since there are quite, uh, there is quite a number of globules uh, in this melanoma, it may, it's not the prototype of very slow growing melanoma. May, maybe it's not very slow growing. So uh, this is, uh, uh, this was a melanoma that was detected early just because total body photography uh, yeah. and, and then and then it comes the question that you are increasing overdiagnosis, uh, Emilio. And yes, uh, I know, but uh, we discussed so much. You, you about... are part of the problem. Eh? Yeah, you well, are getting into the field I am, of overdiagnosis. I am in the core of the problem. Maybe I am the problem itself. <laughs> 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 but for this melanoma, let me tell you, I don't think that this should be used as an example for overdiagnosis. No, I don't know. But let's repeat always the same story that well, I I uh, edit, uh, I heard for the first time to, from Peter Sawyer. A small tiger is still a tiger; is not able to kill anybody. But if you let let her grow, then <laughs> sooner or later she will be able to kill somebody. Eh? Absolutely, absolutely. So I just want to remind that the personal history of melanoma, if we want to. Um, if we want to assess which is which group of patients has the higher risk for a new melanoma, then I would say first are those patients with CDKN to A mutation. Second are patients with personal history of melanoma, and then all the others. So we are speaking about a group which is at, at a substantially high risk to develop melanoma, which we have quantified this risk. We know that it's approximately eight percent at five years, and probably more than this at 10 years or more than 10 years. So I think that this category merits a very careful uh, examination, uh, in my view, irrespectively of the number of nearby. And this is another similar example. JB, you know this case, it's yours, by the way. That's another melanoma, which of course does not look at all uh, like melanoma, even at the day that it was excised. So today, this one, this was the moment that it was excised. And of course, uh, the only way, the reason why it was diagnosed was because again, uh, it developed in a lady who had the previous history of melanoma. She was monitored because of this. And look how it was looking at the beginning. Come on, it's impossible. And it was diagnosed after four visits uh, because of this uh, continuous growth. So. I think that this category of patients with a previous melanoma merit a very careful follow-up. Uh, By the way, she also got a, a previous melanoma. The, the yeah, melanoma. she had the previous melanoma. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's why she was under, under monitoring. Now, two similar lesions, okay? And I will ask you, my friends, you have the option to excise one and to monitor one. And I want you to select which one you excise and which one you monitor. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> you cannot. Okay. Okay. Tell me, what do you want? Do you want to see a, a, a bigger image? Yes, please. <laughs> bigger image. Bigger yes. image. Yes. Does this help you to decide? Not still. We need more. Still not. We do you want dermoscopy? Yes. Does it help you decide? Yes. Really? Well, no. uh, cl clearly, if I, if I have to, uh, if I'm asked to decide, I will. Yeah. But if so, you ask me what to do, uh, it's another story. So what is going to give you the answer? It was not the close-up. It was not dermoscopy. What is going to give you the answer? 
total body. Look how total body. easy, how easy it's gonna be. How easy it's gonna be. Which one do you want to exercise? And uh, which one do you want to monitor? The left. Left. Of course, left. Left, you want to exercise. Yes. Right, you want to monitor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I, what I want to say is that the decision to monitor does not depend on the morphology of a single lesion. The decision to monitor depends on the context. Huh? So you know, before even looking dermatoscopically, that this is a patient that merits monitoring and uh, irrespectively, if you see or not some atypical lesions, you are much more prone to monitor. While on the left, you don't, you are not prone to monitor. On the left, if you have even see little doubts, you don't monitor your excites. Huh? Yeah. So it all depends on the context. One of the last things that I would like to share with you, trust the comparative approach huh? that was introduced by Jeffy many, many years ago, but it's, it, it is really trustable. We should trust it. Huh? It works, okay? When we apply the comparative approach, we don't look for the, we, we don't, classify the ugliness. Everything is ugly. We don't look for the ugliest among the ugly. We look for the arrogant guy, the arrogant guy, the guy who wants to be different, the guy that who wants, that, that cannot, I mean, uh, be like the others. No, no, he wants to be different, you know? You see here, I mean, they are very ugly molds. There is something like central fibrosis, central regression in many of them, but more or less, they are all like, I mean, similar. They are all, all friends. Eh? All there is they no are... arrogant guy here. There, there is, is no arrogant guy. guy. No arrogant guy. Yeah, exactly. While in the next one, the lesions are maybe less ugly, but there is a guy who is look who is trying to behave in a different way. Eh? Don't you think so? Uh, well, uh, there, there is an arrogant guy, but not so arrogant still. Uh, trying to simulate, in my view. Yeah. yeah. But would you select, which one would you select? Uh, uh, bottom uh, second left. But, bottom yeah, second. second left. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And this was supposed to be voted by the, by the audience, but it's okay. Again, nine lesions. Do we see something substantially different among these nine lesions? What do you think? Maybe also the no. other reply in the chat. If you see something substantially different, something really an arrogant guy. Yeah, number eight was one answer, but in number eight, I think that there is just a dermal uh, component. Components. Yes. Uh, no, 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 no arrogant guy. No arrogant guy. Okay. Oh, Let's see. Similar. Let's see the next one. Uh, clinically, I mean, how can you assess dermatos? Oh, oh, where is my image? <laughs> my image is not here. Sorry. Ah, okay. Eh, eh. But there was an arrogant guy, but I mean, uh, we, we, we cannot see it now. Maybe I will show it later. Okay. Last thing, detecting dermatoscopic changes during follow-up. Detection is much easier when you compare, not like this, side by side, but like this. Look, huh? when you have the cost function and you see, you take the new image on the previous one, then there is not a single doubt that there is a change. While in the previous image, it's somehow not so clear that there is a change. So the best way to monitor uh, is using the ghost function. Ah, here, here is the photo. Okay, is the photo. The photo. Ah. So, yes, number nine is the, the arrogant guy. Yeah. Number nine is the arrogant guy. Is the arrogant guy, exactly. Because he doesn't want to look like uh, the others. Very good. Uh, I don't know if we have any additional questions that came during the last minutes. Let's have a check. Let's have a check. Uh, the question is, are you sure? I, I, call them, I call them poorly behaved children, not arrogant guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but but we didn't uh, we didn't suggest anything for the, the, the quote of the week, the rule of the week. Ah, the rule of the week, yeah, yeah. The the um 
the arrogant guy is one option, maybe. The arrogant, the ar look for the arrogant guy. Look, look for the arrogant guy. Yeah, this is an option. Yeah. Uh, are you sure that you couldn't identify the melanoma without comparing image? Uh, well, sometimes yeah. you, you can. can. You can, but we did a study on this. Uh, we have name. We have numbers. Uh, you remember, Emilio? Of course. Uh, so we did a study in which we took all the, uh, we included all the melanomas which were um, excised after follow-up. Eh? And uh, of course, all of them were excised because uh, they were uh, changing over time. Eh? But then we took the last, the last image. So the day we decided to excise the lesion because of the change, and we uh, showed these lesions, these images, to uh, a group of experts. And 60% of these 100 lesions, 60% did were not, uh, were not recognized by the group of experts as melanomas, you know? <laughs> it means that 60% of melanomas that are excised after follow-up do not have the time to develop uh, melanoma specific criteria because we excise them uh, earlier because of the change. So the change is much easier to detect. And then slowly, if you if we wait for sure, sooner or later, all melanomas will develop melanoma specific criteria, but we have to wait a little bit more. Okay, so this is the sense why uh, side by side comparison is important. If the lesion is kind of structureless in the center, but periphery is okay, do you still want to monitor in high risk patient? Yes, because the decision to monitor does not depend on the morphology of the lesion, depends on the characteristics of the patient. So if it is a patient at high risk, I would like to monitor. The morphology of the lesion, of course, counts in order to decide if you want to excise it or not. You compare it with the others. If you, if you think that it's arrogant, you excise it. This depends on the morphology, but then the rest depends on the, the, the risk of the patient. So, uh, so yes, is the answer. Uh, we are running quite a little bit late. So, Jeppy, you, you want to tell us something before we go to, to Nisa's case? I'm not prepared. You're not prepared. Then we go, <laughs> we go to Nisa's case. Uh, and then I, I will tell you something. And then you will tell us something. And we also have to show a video. Huh. I'm a bit early. I can stop sharing the screen. No, no, no. Emilio. Go, 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 go. Okay. Okay. Let's have a look at the first case. The patient is 42 years old uh, and he has a non melanoma skin cancer on the face, squamosar carcinoma, and he has some uh, severe sun damage, not a lot of moles. And I. Uh, I am following up the case, and these are his moles. And one of these is a melanoma. Which one? Okay, use the chat to answer if you if you like. Uh, number six yeah. is a vote. Num um, number six. Number six. Number six. Number six. Many votes for many many votes. Many votes for. Yeah. Okay, this is the first, uh, this is a baseline visit. Uh, so would you like to excise it at this point or would you like to follow up, uh, up the case? Well, I guess that you have the image of the monitor of the follow-up, so... Yeah, for sure. <laughs> because who, 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 who is going to excise number six? Uh, because it, it's uh, just a one, two millimeter lesion. It's very small. And yeah. let's go back uh, to the images. The blue arrow is the lesion baseline and this is six months later and now yeah, uh, so we'll yeah. look at the change and uh, you can see the change yes. uh, actually it's a very interesting lesion and um here you can see uh that one was with uh, photo finder and these are with hand dermatoscope and you can see polarized non-polarized and 405 nanometer images uh you can see angulated lines and some circles central dots so it's highly typical, but still very small lesion, and it was a melanoma in situ. Uh, even though the patient has very few NIY, he has sun damage, he has an history of non-melanoma non skin cancer. I think uh, patients uh, like these also 
should be under follow-ups. Don't you think, think so, guys? Absolutely. Because he, he had uh, less than 40 NIVI, maybe 20, but he has a severe sun damage and uh, he was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma at the age of 40. Mm -hmm. No, no, absolutely. There is no doubt. I mean, uh, of course, there is a yeah. need for follow-up. The question is, if we need to apply also during the visit, if we need to apply total body photography and digital uh, dermoscopy. Well, well I, it's good for the patient. Uh, if we didn't do this, uh, we, we could never catch this melanoma, right? Yeah, yeah. So this was the case. And another one, this is also an interesting guy. Uh, the patient is 62 years old and he has uh, multiple NIY and sunburn history without uh, melanoma history, personal or family, just a lot of moles and sunburn. And now you are looking at the baseline image and five years later. It looks, it doesn't change much. And here are the nevus pattern of the patient Generally, they have uh, reticular lines. And this was the image that I showed you, this one. So, do you think that this is a nevus or melanoma? You the last uh, image more on the side that of we are all together uh, belongs to uh, 2022, uh, three years later, uh, the last visit. So the nevus pattern is reticular lines. We have several votes for melanoma, some votes for nevus. I would say 75% for melanoma, 25% for nevus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's go. Now maybe it's 50-50. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is uh, five years later from the baseline. So sometimes we may, we may have very slowly progressing melanomas and we can just um, realize the changes during follow-ups because it really looks like a news, isn't it? Uh, but this was all melanoma in situ with some regressive features. And here is uh, the image with hand dermatoscope. You can see the change uh, five years later, uh, we can see uh, that this was a melanoma. So this is the same patient and this is my last case. Uh, you see the total body photography images. There's a little one here. It wasn't there, tick, tick, and it's growing. Nice. And you see the change. Uh, it was very small uh, with some radial lines, but this is six months later and it was melanoma in situ. So this patient was a high risk patient with uh, a lot of moles, with a history of melanoma and this one, new one, and the patient is 62 years old. And this was uh, called by the help of total body photography. Otherwise, it's really very tiny lesion. This is overdiagnosis uh, example. Eh? Yeah, this is, <laughs> but do you think that this is overdiagnosis? Oh, <laughs> no, you know that I don't think that this is overdiagnosis. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. So, the, the, and Napoleon asks, uh, do you think that it was? A melanoma back in 2019, or just a yeah, sure. plastic it's... nevus that uh, no it... nevus, no nevus at uh, all melanoma. But all sometimes, melanoma. really, melanomas can be really very slow. Really slow growing, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice, very nice, fantastic, fantastic. Bravo, Thanks bravo, a lot. Bravo, uh, bravo. Very uh, good. So why do we size a new mole in a patient with a previous melanoma? Uh, just monitor. Um, well, I mean, it depends. I mean, uh, we cannot excise all new moles in patients with previous melanoma. Uh, obviously, we cannot. Uh, so monitoring, because monitoring gives us the, the, the information of how these new moles behave. I mean, if, if they are stable or not, that's why monitoring is uh, very uh, helpful. Um, so, uh, Jeff, okay, you started already. Okay, good. Yes, yes, yes. Francesco started uh, a video from uh, our friends from Aini. You know that Aini is the, let's say, the original company 
who invented uh, the first thermoscope back uh, in the early 90s uh, uh, due to um, uh, uh, a co combination of uh, shared work uh, uh, with the University of Munich. Uh, and, uh, and Aine is now still uh, among the leads, uh, among the, the leaders in the field of uh, uh, thermoscopes. So uh, this is uh, the CEO, uh, Oliver Aini. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But of course, again, there was no, uh, there was no sound uh, in the yes. video. Maybe uh, I will try to, uh, I will try to do something. Let me share a moment uh, the video from uh, uh, from Moa, who is also. Uh, ah no, let me no no. Just a moment, just a moment. Condividi avanzate and video and video and then uh, download and then this uh, and let's see if now no again no sound no sound no sound jeppy no sound no sound okay 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 yeah but there is no point into no sound no sound yeah there is no sound no, there is no sound. There okay, no sound. okay. No sound. So I don't know how to do it. I don't know. We need Sebi. <laughs> we need Sebi. Uh, this is a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I also do one uh, shot and you tell me if there is sound or not. And then we stop trying. Is the sound? When we at Heine Optotechnic develop, improve, and produce our instruments, we first think of the many thousands of doctors worldwide who use our instruments every day. And we think about the millions of people worldwide who are examined with our instruments, the patients. We think about the fact that a good diagnosis must be as precise as possible so that diseases are detected as early as possible. We think about the future of millions of people. And we think about how that future can be a healthy future. That's why we build the best instruments for over 75 years. Wonderful. So, Emilio, it means that you can also show us uh, Moa's video if you are able. Uh, no, because I, I don't have it in the, uh, on the browser. I have it as a video. I will try, but uh, uh, I'm not sure. The point is that I just wanted to comment. Uh, so Heine was, invented the dermatoscope in uh, 1989. I think that it was presented uh, at the first time in the American Academy Congress, although it was a European, let's say, discovery. And in fact, it flourished in uh, in europe for many many years europe was uh, the main i mean uh, place where the endoscopy developed and also the research was conducted to a big extent in europe so i wonder back then i would like to experience this moment when uh, this product was first uh, you know presented to our colleagues which was uh, the initial reaction reaction well <laughs> I suppose that the reaction is always very skeptical. You know, whenever <laughs> there is something something new, uh, it's always very skeptical because we are afraid about new things. You know, mm -hmm. human beings in general are afraid about new new things. So, but eventually, it uh, it was a success. Eventually, they should be very proud because what they did <laughs> obviously was extremely successful. Uh, so. Uh, that was it about Heine, one of our sponsors. We have very few things uh, still. Uh, should I try to, to launch the video? But I will try only once. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not optimistic, let me tell you, because um, I tried earlier and it didn't work. And then we have to go, of course, to our... No, so here we are. Tell me if there is sound. No, no sound, no sound. Okay, so we'll show it next week. Uh, we we call 
glorified magnifying lands that the mother's called glorified magnifying lands yeah mm. i like it i like it definitely it was a story of success an ongoing story of success so now we go to which part of the of the of the show guys tell me eh, penelope penelope penelope's gift penelope's gift for this week again four gifts each one uh, uh, one for each one of us uh, as always penelope is very kind with us for the smiling sweetness dear nisa uh, is the first gift which is this one so what's the first word septuagenarian yeah, very old lady old lady a very old lady with a plethora of nevus no dermatological follow-up for more than 10 years and i discovered this lumbar lesion that flashes under the eye of my dermatoscope over diagnosis or not <laughs> <laughs> well eh? well okay. i will never leave it there for sure <laughs> Do we, is there any comment to do? I don't think so. Huh? That's obviously uh, a nodular yeah. uh, melanoma. Uh, what's your diagnosis? Of course, it's a nodular melanoma with all the criteria, uh, with the crazy vessels, the pink color, white shiny lines, and of course, this eccentric blue uh, area. Very good for the free electron, dear Constantinos, who we miss a lot, of course, and we hope to have him with us next week. Uh, 62 with a plethora of postural antigens, first dermatological examination. Uh, this, I discovered these two large hyperpigmented flat lesions on the root of your right arm and flash under the eye of my dermatoscope, over diagnosis or not. Let's see, over diagnosis. No. Uh, should we leave it there? Come on. Come on, you over diagnosers. You want to excise all these. <laughs> and the second. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Go back for a moment. You know, but no, you don't know it because you are too young to, um, to remember this. But uh, believe it or not, the first term that then wa was uh, moved, what was uh, changed into blue white veil was Milky Way. Milky Way? Yeah. Milky Way, and this looks really like a Milky Way. So I understand why at the beginning they saw something like this, Peter Sawyer, um, uh, Willy Stolz and so on, and they decided to call it Milky Way. Yeah. Oh, by the way, here there is just a lot of regression or, or not. Yes, yes, yes. But regression. Look at, at this, um, you know, this uh, line. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. A little bit like... Uh, the second one, let's let's uh, let's leave it there. I mean, come on. Yeah, uh, why not? Yeah. Over it's there, small, it's a small tiger. It's not killing. Tiger, tiger. Small tiger. Over diagnosis or not? I don't know, dear Pascal. You have no. to ask. You have to email the authors of the publication in the New England and <laughs> ask them if you should <laughs> leave these notes there because from us, you know, which is the answer. We are not. I mean, the best people to ask. By the way, the one, uh, the regressive one, uh, was not in situ, it was 0 0.2, uh, while the other one was, a, it's a classic in situ uh, melanoma with these small blotches there in the upper part. For the philosopher, for the philosopher. Uh, Nonagenarian, this is even... Nonagenarian, yeah. yeah. Comes under pressure from family and friends because of this forehead slick that uh, is beginning to show over diagnosis <laughs> or not? It's not over diagnosis, but it could be eventually a, a, an over treatment. Over treatment, yeah. yeah, because that's obviously lentigo maligna. So, lentigo maligna, yeah. a, a small Lentigo. excision, and then imiquimod, it, or or even even imiquimod uh, from the beginning, because I mean. Uh, well, I mean, come on. Let's let, let's not be so radical for the moment, step by step. First, we have to establish the narrow excision plus imiquim, more than maybe in the future. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, of course, it's a classic lentigo maligna. And for Mr. Kahoot, uh, who is me, thank you very much, uh, for teaching the discovery of these two happy with many varicose lesions of similar clinical look located on the left cheek, flash under the eye of the matoscope, over diagnosis or not. Again, uh, we can see more or less the same pattern that we saw uh, earlier with this 
small blotches or irregular hyperpigmented areas, so very likely melanoma. In situ, the second one is a little bit interesting. Seborrheicheratosis. I, yeah. I know the, the answer, that's why I did not want to comment, but it looks like a seborrheicheratosis, mm -hmm. and uh, that was uh, the correct diagnosis, mm -hmm. lentigo malignant, the first one, and seborrheicheratosis, the second. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much, our dear Pascal. And now it's time to, to close the episode. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Yeah. Aren't you no. going to protest? Kahoot! We Kahoot, want Kahoot. Kahoot. Would you like me to sing? Would you like me to sing? Yes. By the way, which is the quote of the day? We don't have to vote because we have only one candidate. Only one. Mm. Which is look, for the, look, look for the arrogant. Yeah. No, 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 no. I would say, I would say, look for the um, bad behave, uh, bad behavior children. Bad, bad behave, bad behave. Uh, wait a moment. Wait a moment. How was it? Uh, it was um... find it, find it, and I, I, yes, will, I will find it. I will find it. Find it now. Find it now. Uh... Please find it now, and I will put it in. In. Uh... Uh, 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 okay. Uh, I don't find it easily. Uh, Eccolo qua. Poorly behaved child. Poorly behaved child. Maleducato, maleducato, we say maleducato. Look for the poorly behaved children. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Save. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Forza, 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 forza. Forza, forza. Oh, wonderful. Forza, forza Napoli. <laughs> forza Napoli. This <laughs> year, Napoli is not so forza. Not so forza this year. No, no this year is a little bit. Uh, not so forza. Not li like last year. Yeah. So our Kahoot is loading classic mode, of course, classic mode up to 2,000 players. We are still under 2,000, but we are getting there today. I think we had the record number of participants uh, as far as I was able to see. Uh, yes, more than 300, more than 300. 350, I think. Uh, so that's the theme, waiting for players and players slowly arrive. Uh, as usually, at the beginning, they arrive slowly, but after a certain point, they uh, arrive all yes. together. So we will wait for 20 seconds or so, and then we will start, uh, and everybody will appear as soon as and, we start. Uh, there is also the competition for the best nickname, right? I mean, best nickname? Uh, don't forget to use a, a nice nickname. Which was last week's uh, nickname, the Ugly Sebore Yes, was? yes, I have it here. Um, uh, Chialis 2024 and uh, <laughs> Hungry ZK. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. nice, nice. Okay, so in my view, I should start because there's no okay. waiting here. Everybody will appear when we start. Yes, Let's do it. I'm not sure if the poll question was eventually saved. If yes, good. If not, uh, we will do it afterwards. No, it was not saved. So we we start with the uh, five cases. First, four clinical images. Do you like them? I like them. Sure. Too much. Yeah. Good. Oh. What happened? Okay. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So, so so now. There is a problem with my Kahoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, it's a live show and problems happen from time to time. Yeah, but it's no problem because you can you can still see them. Come on. Yeah. Come on. No, you will understand 
in a bit why it is a problem, but it's the same problem for everybody. So it's not unfair. Yeah. <laughs> so number four was the melanoma, by the way, if you want to check again. Show, show it again. Yeah. Okay. Again. Number four was the melanoma. Okay. We have 37 correct answers and we have LN being at the first place. Okay. And now you will understand why it is a problem, what happened. Uh, the problem is that the next question is uh, how many melanomas you see in this image? So you all know the answer, be fast, be fast, <laughs> be fast, <laughs> be fast. <laughs> uh, sometimes it happens sometimes it happens yeah 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 are, are they not four <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a pity what a pity what a pity okay uh, so one bravo <laughs> fantastic <laughs> Fantastic. So we have uh, Moss, 80 uh, in the first place, Dr. Silar in the second, Ali in the third. And we continue with our next question, which is this one. That's the clinical. Do you like it? I like it. No. Very sharply demarcated. Geographic yeah. border. Geographic border, that's the Moscopy. Yeah, okay. And we go to the question, true or false? This is a congenital nevus. I capito. Eh, but geographic borders. But now do you hear the music of the caput? No. No. No, no music. No, no music. No. So I'm dancing, and you think that I'm dancing without music, yeah? False. Oh. Man. Well, very, Perfect. it was not a congenital nevus, it was a melanoma. Excellent, which uh, does not change the first place. Most 80 is still there, Ali is the second, and Alb is the third. The next question is tricky because this is the image, the clinical. Uh -huh. This is dermoscopy. Okay. And now you have to type the answer. You have to type it, type it. Uh -huh. okay? uh -huh. Type the answer. Uh -huh. Interesting. Type your answer. Type your answer. Type your answer. You see, Kahoot is improving a lot, eh? Uh, uh, <laughs> making yeah. uh, many options, giving many options. What would you type, my friends? Combined. Combined, <laughs> Combined <laughs> nibbles you would type. Wow. So we have top, let's see how the result will, will appear now. Top 20 answers. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. So we have combined nevus was the correct answer, but I uh, I allowed as also correct answers with less points, the answers blue nevus and nevus. Uh, okay, so the, the ones that, vote, that wrote combined nevus got the maximum points, the ones that wrote blue nevus or nevus got some points. Okay, next, let's see what happened. What happened is that Alb uh, is now in the first place and Ali in the second and Didi in the third and Pavlos in the fourth. Which brings us to the last one for the day. This nice nodule. Very nice, let's say so. Very nice nodule, I know. I know. It's a very nice nodule. Yeah, a bit hyperkeratotic. And the question is, which is the diagnosis? You have to select among pyogenic granuloma, basal cell, squamous cell, and melanoma. Difficult, you think? Oh. No. No. I also think so. It's feasible. 
What is difficult is the situation of the patient, not the answer. Because this was a 6.6 6. Yeah. Uh, melanoma that, of course, most of the people were able to find. Which brings us to the podium for today. And we have number three, four, Didi. Didi, 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 Ali. And number one, four, Alba, 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 Alberto, Alberta, Albicocca. Yes, yes. So Alb, uh, I don't know now if we can. Uh, I don't find... know if we are able to admit Alb to the show because uh, yeah. not sure if we are able to do it. Yeah, I also don't know. I don't, I'm also not yeah. sure. Uh, but Alb will remain in in the bottom of our, our heart. For sure. No, no, but, but Alb <laughs> at least can write in the chat uh, yes. who who he or she is. Yes, yes. And uh, I don't know what we should do with the quote of the week because it's a pity that we don't uh, have the answer for the quote of the week. Should we use the chat and then uh, the more answers uh, uh, win? Eh, clear. We can. We have, we have two options: arrogant versus arrogant versus uh, child, bad behave, uh, uh, poorly behaved children. Poorly behaved children. So let's see a few answers, and we we will understand. Arrogant, 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 arrogant. Oh, arrogant is arrogant. Okay, arrogant, arrogant. Clear win. Nice, done, done. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so. Thank you very much. We apologize for today. We had a few technical problems. Uh, well, uh, quite a few technical yes, problems. But, but, you know, but, it was fun anyhow. And, and yeah. especially, I still love you, although there were technical problems. <laughs> we love you so much, so much. We love you so much. Ragazzi, Bye. see you Thank next you. Sunday. See, see you next Sunday. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye, bye.